Hello friends, welcome back to my new video lecture. In this video lecture, I will be talking about a poet uh, who is very, very important uh, from Indian poetry perspective. He is a poet uh, whose poems depict Indian sensibility. He is a poet who very vividly through his vivid images describes the rural, uh, you know, daily scores of life. He is a poet which talks, who talks about history. He he's a poet who talks about loneliness. So he is overall and he is a short story writer and many other categories of writings he has done. He is a bilingual poet, bilingual writer and uh, what not. So uh, today, my dear friends, as you have guessed rightly, today I will be talking about Jayanta Mahapatra. Before I start Jayanta Mahapatra uh, biographic details, it is my humble request, my dear friends, that if you uh, like my channel, please subscribe as you can see on my uh, side here. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Your subscription will give me that energy, that impetus to create more valuable uh, videos. And I would also very humbly like to request you all that if you all have time, please take out your valuable time and watch till the end of this video because each and every part in this video is prepared in a way which, which will be very, very helpful for, for you during, during your BAMA examinations, traditional examinations, as well as for various competitive examinations. So my dear friends, let us start with Jayanta Mahapatra's lecture today. Jayanta Mahapatra when I am talking about is this particular lecture will be divided into two parts. One part, part number one, will be, I will be talking about Jayanta Mahapatra as a writer, as a poet, where I will discuss his important works and I will try to give a few points about his works, uh, which I have tried to very meticulously accumulate, keeping into uh, mind the seriousness of it because you know this, these, these points are very helpful for you all in your various kinds of examinations and part two of this video i will uh, i will talk about the themes uh, that jayanta mahapatra has dealt mainly um, in his poems so when we talk of jayanta mahapatra as a writer the first thing we should know is his timeline he was born on 22nd of october 1928 and he's still very active in his life he still writes and uh, he, he's, he's agile and he's active. So he was born in a, uh, 22nd October uh, 1928 in a place called Katak, Katak, which is in Odisha. And he was born into a very prominent Odia family. His father Lemuel Mahapatra was a sub-inspector of primary schools and his Jayanta Mahapatra studied in Stewart School, Katak. Later on, he completed his Master of Science in Physics, MSc in Physics from Patna University, Bihar, and he started his career as a teacher, as a lecturer in physics in 1949. He retired also as a teacher uh, in the position of uh, a reader of physics in 1986. Mahapatra is, as I said, is a bilingual poet and essayist. He, he began writing very late in his career. And this, this point is very important, my dear friends. He is part of the trio of poets along with A.K. Ramanujan and R. Partha Sarathi. Like we have trio in Indian fiction. Who are the trios in Indian fiction? Mulk Rajanan, Raja Rao and R.K. Narayan. In that same way, we have trio in Indian poetry. Who are the trios? Jayanta Mahapatra, A.K. Ramanujan, R. Partha Sarathi. He has uh, overall written around 27 books, majority of which is in English, uh, out of which he has written seven uh, in Uriya. He has to his credit some of the most prestigious awards. Starting with, he received the Jacob Gelston Memorial Award in 1975, followed by the Japan Foundation Visitors Award in 1980. He was the first Indian English poet to receive the Sahitya Academy Award 1981 for his poetry called Relationship. This is very important. He is the first Indian English poet and he received his Padma Shri in 2009. Now, my dear friends, let us start with his poetry collection one by one. His first poetry collection is Close the Sky 10 by 10, which was published in 1971. This Close, by, uh, sky, uh, Close the Sky 10 by 10 published in 1971, contains 49 poems and uh, 
this poetry collection marks his big stamp of his own solitude and silence and this poetry collection also starts with a poem called loneliness that unfolds his world of images his second poetry collection called the swayamvar and other poems which was published in 1971 this swayamvar and other poems consists of 33 poems weaved in indian sensibility one can very uh, easily guess and uh, you know experience the indian sensibility in in these poems some of the very important poems in this collection include the bride tradition child and teacher traffic constable blind singer in train all these poems in this poetry collection carry the hallmark of a especially a verbal portrayal of odisha through these poems mahapatra tries to express the indian traditions scenes and experiences his next poetry collection my dear friends is a father's hour published in 1976 father's hour contains only four poems out of these four poems two are longer poems two are short poems the longer two longer poems are performance which has seven sections followed by the 25th anniversary of republic 1975 this poetry contains 10 section 20 sections his two other poems are level and assassination hey, these four poems although the output is less but these four poems is significant uh, in this poetry collection called a father's are because these four poems deals with his experimentation with form and language and in this poems mahapatra takes a very deep plunge into myths history rituals and in social life his fourth poetry collection is rain of rights published in 1976 this is a very very much acclaimed poetry collection because it contains some of the very famous poems such as dawn at puri and hunger and uh, mahapatra in this poetry collection blends his inner and outer world with symbols and images which are drawn from the world of nature as well as signs and feelings this poetry collection is also very significant my dear friends because woman is one of the dominant themes of this poetry collection this is followed by his fifth poetry collection called waiting which was published in 1979 waiting uh, marks mahapatra's maturity and his strong communion with surroundings the recurrent themes of this poetry collection are stone priest ruins of temples shrine widows prostitutes children river light dust death and stone that is why my dear friends uh, mahapatra is called the poet of the local he has very minutely described the local daily scores the local flora fauna along with the local daily movement of a rural life his poetry is mainly consists of areas such as puri katak and also his poetry consists of a very important area called kalahandi this also my dear friends you should remember when you are reading a uh, mahapatra the his sixth poetry collection is the false start which was published in 1980 false start uh, you know carries three sections and is divided into three you know in the form of three stages of life called the childhood middle age and old age and this poetry collection also has very vivid and realistic depiction of images such as moon ash voice silence loneliness heart earth cruelty etc his seventh is relationship which is a very long poem of 12 sections published in 1980 uh, the epigraph of this is drawn from of this poem is drawn from walt whitman's song of myself and uh, in this poem mahapatra celebrates his land history myths culture and uh, he molds it with his own history and memories this poetry is also important because this poetry parts of this poetry also deals with a very important um, aspect that is concern for society this is followed by number 8 poetry collection called the life science which was published in 1983 this phase this uh, poetry collection marks the new phase in mahapatra's poetic journey why because this is a half way between his own history his childhood memories myths of the land along with the realities lying at the ground this is followed by his ninth poetry collection called the dispossessed nest which was published in 1986 it's a verse tale of the social and political crisis in india during the year 1984 political crisis happened in 1984 as you know uh, this is followed by his 10th poetry collection called the burden of waves and fruits which was published in 1988 
Burden of Waves and Fruits, published in 1988, contains 48 poems. This collection discusses some of the common images and themes which are very, very recurrent in the poems of Jayanta Mahapatra. But this, these common themes are recurrent, it's fine. But why this is important? Because this recurrent themes in this poetry collection is dealt with a new meaning, a new treatment altogether. This is followed by his 11th poem. His 11th in the line, that is Temple, which was published in 1989. Temple is important because Temple is considered to be the longest poem by Jayanta Mahapatra. And in this poem, the persona moves into a world which is varied and public rather than a private. Then this particular poem is divided into three parts. The first part is divided into seven sections. The second part is divided into eight sections. And the third part is divided into four uh, sections. Temple is followed by a poetry collection called Whiteness of Bone. A Whiteness of Bone was published in 1992. This particular collection contains 59 poems. And the title of this collection, if you... Uh, Pay attention if you, if you read the title of this collection. The title clearly symbolizes the general theme of these poems. And the title also suggests lifelessness, death, melancholic nature and tragedies of the land. So uh, you can very well guess the kind of the category of poems that you will expect if you read the poetry collection of Mahapatra called A Whiteness of Bone which was published in 1992. A Whiteness of Bone is followed by his uh, next collection which was published in 1997 called the shadow space shadow space contains 54 poems and uh, this collection deals with the two coaxial world of science and arts this is followed by his another poetry collection called the bare face or uh, which was published in 2000 the poems in this collection shows uh, the persona's obsession with symbols and imagery and this poetry collection very vividly, uh, you know, it, it uh, depicts the bare realities of history and his time. This is followed by his next, Mahapatra's next uh, poetry collection called The Random Descent, which was published in 2005. Random Descent uh, is a compilation of Persona's random thoughts that has been portrayed in his earlier works, but with a new perspective. This particular collection called the Random Descent is divided into three sections. Random Descent is followed by his another poetry collection called Land. 2013 it was published. This poetry collection Land has 31 poems. The poems in this collection, they generally deal as you can very well understand the, the title of the collection. They, the, the poems generally deal with uh, the theme of land and also has very recurrent images of River, stone, shadow, hunger, just jasmine, uh, such kind of images. Now, these are his poetry collection, my dear friends. Let us now move into his next category of writing. That is, this is these are all written in poetry in um, English. Now, let us go to his other collection called Poetry in Odia. Poetry in Odia, he has published total seven collections. One is The Bali, The Victim, 1993, followed by Kahibe Gotiya Katha, I Will Tell You a Story, 1995, followed by Baya Raja, The Mad Emperor, 1997, Tiki Chai, A Little Shadow, 2004, Charlie Walking, 2006, Jadiba Gapati, Even If It's a Story, 2008, Smruti Pari Kichiti, A Small Memory, published in 2011. These are, my dear friends, the seven poetry collections uh, by Mahapatra published in Odia language. There are, you know, Mahapatra has done a lot of translations. Uh, so now, as you can see in your screen, these are the translated poems from Odia to English. What are those? One is Countermeasures, 1973, Wings of the Past, 1976, Songs of Kubja and other poems, 1981, I can, but why should I? This was published in 1994, Verticals of Life, 1996, Tapaswini, 1998, Discovery and Other Poems, 2001, A Time of Rising, 2003. So, you know, you can, you can very well guess the kind of uh, produ produce, you know, the kind of fertile uh, writing 
that Mahapatra has done, even though he has started uh, at a very late age, but uh, he has continued and he is carrying on uh, with his plethora of writing. He has even wrote, my dear friend, short stories, as you can see in the screen. The, he has written one short story collection called The Green Gardener and another story which was published in 1977, followed by two important short stories that he wrote. One is And Under the Pines, 1979 and Bells for a Bull, 1977. His other prose works, please, uh, as you can see on your screen, his other prose works include Door of Paper, Essays and Memoirs, published in 2006, followed by Bhor Moitro Kanafula, which was written in Uriya his prose work 2011 and he also wrote you know history has always fascinated him so he has also wrote a book on the history of Odessa. Uh, my dear friends this particular slide is very important if you if you are a research scholar you can very well understand the names of the generals that you can see now uh, if you're not, I'm sure you will definitely become a research scholar in the near future. My dear friends, I'd just like to tell you all that these are some of the very, very prestigious research generals available in the world. And as you can see on your screen, um, Jayanta Mahapatra have published his poems in such reputed generals, which very clearly, you know, testifies his quality as a poet. You can see starting with aerial, critical, quarterly, times literary, sub supplement, boundary, Hudson review, Sivan review, helix iron, the Bombay literary review, cross currents. And this is very important, Chandra Bhaga. Chandra Bhaga, this is very important point. Please note it down very seriously. Chandra Bhaga is, is, is Mahapatra's own general, which he had dedicated to his new, uh, to the new Indian writing. So Chandra Bhaga is very important. I would just like to add that he also wrote for the Telegraph Supplement published from Calcutta. Now, according to Lakshmi, these, these are <coughs> my dear friends. Now we let us go to this uh, critic called Lakshmi Narayan Bhatpi, who divided Mahapatra's entire career into three parts, three phases of Mahapatra's poetry. As you can see, the early phase, which started from the first poetry collection, Close the Sky, 10 by 10, uh, 1971, to A Father's Hour, 1976. This he terms as Mahapatra's period of poet as an apprenticeship, largely derivative in nature. His, uh, then he divided, Lakshmi Rana divided uh, Mahapatra's second uh, category, second phase of poetry writing, that is the middle period. And he categorized that in the middle period from his poetry collection, The Reign of Rights 1976 to The Fall Star 1980. This category uh, belongs to the middle period of Mahapatra according to the according to Lakshmi Narayan Bhatt. <clears throat> and this middle period uh, Bhatt considers to be Mahapatra's period of inventiveness and experimentation, followed by the third period called the recent period, which he took as relationship from 1980 to a whiteness of bone 1992 and um, uh, Lakshmi Narayan uh, this uh, third called the recent period uh, you know demarcates Mahapatra as a poet as a, a period of profound maturity in thought and expression of Mahapatra's poet. So this is still 1992 and so these three phases can be further extended and can be considered to be a fourth phase and we can name it as the contemporary period and in contemporary period uh, his poetry collection Bali which was published in 1993 till land 2013 can be considered uh, because the same mood continued with more contemplation on the uh, on the theory of poetic creation uh, his inability to write poetry universal approach religion and philosophy uh, so these are the three phases, uh, you know, <clears throat> divided by Lakshmi Narayan, but followed by a fourth phase called the contemporary period. Now, my dear friends, I would like to just give you an idea, as you can see on your screen. These are some of the themes you should jot down uh, because uh, I say jot down because, you know, these are themes which if you have in mind, uh, it will be it will be very very beneficial for you when you try to demarcate when you try to decipher his poems understand his poems so these are uh, please uh, as you can see on your screen these are some of the very very pertinent vivid important themes of Jayanta Mahapatra's poetry writings what are they 
Indianness, mythology, religion and philosophy, history, time, social scenario, family relations, love, nature, search for self, theory of poetic creation, silence, fear and pain, politics, alienation, anti-hero absurd, east-west encounter, transculturation, local color. These are, my dear friends, broadly the themes uh, in which Mahapatra mainly deals with in his poems. My dear friends, I hope uh, you have enjoyed this video. I hope I was able to give you some idea about Jayanta Mahapatra, biographical details and important works. Definitely in my upcoming videos, I will talk about Mahapatra's poems uh, in details. I will try to give a one or two critical appreciation of Mahapatra's poems. And uh, thank you very much for taking out your valuable time. But before uh, you, uh, before you, we depart, of course, for meeting again, uh, it would be my humble request that uh, if you like my video, if you like my hard work, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, just you know give me that energy, provide that impetus so that I can uh, create more videos and we can establish more communions. It is a great feeling, my dear friends. Uh, when uh, I have such kind of feedbacks from different parts of the world that you, my uh, esteemed subscribers, are enjoying my videos. That is the best gift I can have. Thank you very much for taking out your valuable time and watching this video. May God bless you all. This is Dr. Shoikot Banerjee signing for now. Take very good care of yourself. Thank you very much.